Hi, I'm Damien Hecker and welcome to Leaders TV. I'm really excited to have our two guests with us today on the eve of the first ever AFL women's season. Twins Sarah and Jess Hosking we recently picked up as dra draft picks number 19 and 78 and we welcome you both to Leaders TV. Welcome. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. It's good to be here. Uh, now, you guys have uh, a really interesting story because you haven't been playing football for that long and now you're playing in the first ever AFL women's um, season. Can you tell us a little bit about your sporting background to start off? Yep, I'll go first. So um, we, oh, oh, since we've been little, we've pretty much been playing sport since about five or six. And we, at school, were managed to able to be able to play pretty much any sports, ranging from athletics, footy, basketball, netball, soccer, you name it, we tried it. Um, and then our main sport's been netball since we were, we probably played since we were in year three, I reckon. And then um, we played that at quite an elite level in the Victorian Netball League, um, where I played in the championship side for Peninsula Waves for about the last four or five years now. And Jess was in the Division One side as well and managed to captain that for the last two years. Um, and now we've transferred across to footy, where I'll let you to... <laughs> Yeah. So, so Jess, um, you've you've recently come across to, to this sport, and I think you've both only had one season of actual actually competitively playing. Is that right? That's right. We, um, uh, as Sarah said before, our only games of footy were for Turak when we were at school, and then this has been our first full season, or for Sarah full season, and me half a season. Um, and we'll get into that why yeah. it was half a season in due course. Yeah, and um, yeah, I think we both absolutely love it, and we're pretty excited for the new season. Yeah, you and a lot of other people out there, I'm sure. I think so. <laughs> um, now, Sarah, so you were the actual, and this is pretty incredible, but in your first season, you were the VFL Women's Rising Star last year. That's right. Yeah. How, yeah. how did that feel to collect that award? Oh, it was, it was amazing. I had I didn't even expect it. I think. Um, I was sitting with Jess at the table on the night. We just thought we were going along for a bit of a watch and have a good night. And then um, all of a sudden they put up who was nominated on the board and Jess has tapped me on the shoulder and gone, see, you, your, your name's up there. So I got excited just for being nominated. And then five seconds later, my name was out on the board again saying that I had won it. So, I, yeah, I was pretty stoked. I honestly didn't expect it at all. No pre-prepared speech? Then. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. I think, yeah, I rambled on a little bit, but it was, I think I was more shocked about the whole thing than anything. Thrown in the deep end a little. Yeah, yeah very yeah. much so. Well, yeah. congratulations. That's a fantastic yeah. effort. Um, Jess, your story is a little bit different. Um, halfway through the season, you did your ACL and you're in recovery now. Um, how challenging has that been um, for you in a rehabilitation, rehabilitation process, but also um, watching the girls starting the training in the first season? Um, oh, I mean, it's one, it's been my most successful year in footy, but again, or in any sport actually. And on the other hand, it's been probably one of my worst seasons in any sport as well. So I've kind of had to balance and juggle between the emotions of having a high of playing at state level and then also um, playing for Melbourne and then being drafted. But at the same time, now I've got a year, if not more, of rehab and it's one of the hardest things I've ever had to do, to be honest. But yeah. We'll talk a little bit more about that a um, little bit further on. Yeah. Okay, so hold fire on that. Uh, how exciting is it to be part of the foundation season of the AFL Women's Program? Oh, it's incredible. I think for us, transferring across from sports, I think we uh, were picked up in the NAB talent search, so we trialled for that. And I think being able to see that there was an opportunity for women to now play in AFL, I think we were just astounded. I think we... Um... <laughs> Sorry, I was at a mental break. That's OK. Um, what, yeah, about, what about you, Jess? We'll go, I'll go to yeah. you um, because it's a bit, little bit different for you at the moment. Um, how, how do you, even though you're not playing, yeah. it still must be pretty exciting. It is. It's, um, I mean, probably the most exciting thing that's happened for us over the last couple of weeks or something that's made it kind of reality is we've walked into our locker rooms and we're the first name on the locker. And I think that's something that we can always look to that it's, we were the first to do it. So... Mm. Um, I think for both of us or for everyone that's going on this journey, we're all so excited. We don't know what to expect. 
and I think the same with spectators. They don't know what to expect, yeah. but it's all just exciting to see what will happen. Um, you, I mean, we get to lay the foundations for the youth girls coming through. I mean, there's five, six, seven, eight-year-olds that we're talking to parents now and they're saying, oh, my girl, my daughter now wants to play football and she's got the opportunity. We had a, a mum talk to us the other week and she said that she sat her, her son and her daughter down and said, asked her the questions about football and, and the daughter goes, oh, only my brother can play and that was about a year ago and having this whole new foundation of women's footy coming along, she sat them down again and now she said, that's what I want to do, I want to go and play women's football. So it's, it's exciting to know that we can set that foundation and set that layer for young girls. I completely agree. And you probably, it's a good segue to one of my questions I was going to hold off on, but I'm going to go to it now. Um, and as young women and, and being role models for, for young girls and young women, um, not just in sport, but in life in general, um, what message do you want to send to young women um, and girls about leadership? I think at the most important thing for them is that they don't give up on what they want to do. And I think not just for girls, but for boys as well, a lot of people will be told they can't do something in life. And if they go by what someone else tells them, they'll never do what they want to do. So I think the main thing is that if, if they want to play footy, they've got to give it everything they want and go for it. Yep. Sarah? Yeah, pretty much exactly what Jess has said, but I'd, again, suggest do everything you can. Growing up, we were fortunate enough to have the opportunity, like I said, to play all, a range of sports and that way we were able to see what we enjoyed and what we didn't and I think for us we always love playing in team sports as well as individual but mainly team sports because you get that environment mm. where um, you can work with others and it's, it is, it's that leadership that I think mm. we developed as we were younger being able to play in a team sport so I strongly recommend just giving everything a go. I mean we weren't the best at everything but we gave it a shot. And That's a great message. Um, We've already touched on the, the netball and football um, for both of you. Have you found any differences or similarities in regards to culture and leadership between the netball and the football environments? Yeah, definitely. I think um, both being a team sport, you've got both aspects of both culture and leadership. Um, I think for there's little differences. One, the fact that football has a lot more players. So if you're taking on a leadership role, which pretty much everyone does on a field. Um, there's just a lot more aspect to it that you've got to regard that you've got 27 players in our team. We've got 27 on the field, you've got 18. So there's a lot more compared to netball. You've got seven, it's a lot easier to control seven people or to, I guess, help seven people rather yeah. than the 18. But I mean, it's, it's what yeah. we both enjoy, so. Yeah. Sarah, what about you? Have you found any, because you've been, I guess, more in the training environment. Yeah. Um, have you found differences, similarities? I think, yeah, again, the similarities are quite high. Obviously, the difference is, um, I think, just netball is probably a little bit more, what's the word? You'd, um, <laughs> lost it again. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, oh, give me a second, I'll get there eventually. <laughs> um, Have you, um, I guess if you look back on your last season of, of netball, yeah. your last season or yeah, your previous season of football, yeah. is there anything that you could point your finger on to say, well, this is, this is really different or this is really the same? I think playing at such a high level for both, I think the, the difference in football because it's still such a new environment everyone's still trying to figure out where to go yep. and i think that that's probably the biggest difference with netball everyone you know where you're trying to get to and um i think we had a culture that was already set whereas football it's it's still in that new Developing. new changes where you've got to try and figure out your culture you have to try and figure out the leadership you obviously get your standard leadership where you want to try and create a good team environment yep. but yeah, the culture is definitely a big one. I think you, we sort of need to start laying down those ground rules from the beginning to set the standard. Yeah. Um, you're both ambassadors for Rebel Sport, I believe. Uh, how are you both balancing work, study, and with your commitments to a high performance sporting regime? Um, I'll start this one. I have actually just recently resigned from work because of 
the workload. Yep. Um, and I think that's the one thing that a lot of athletes or people in general don't do well is probably their balance between all their different commitments. Yep. And it's all well and good to try and fit everything in and you're going to try and please everyone. But it really comes down to how you're feeling and you're going to run yourself into the ground if you don't look after yourself. So I've kind of laid back on the work that I was doing and I've picked up other things. Um, on top of that, had to get back into rehab and then all the sports training. And then obviously you've got your friends and family outside of that that you've got to see as well. So... I think, yeah, it was just a matter of kind of juggling them and making sure I had a balance of everything, which I've now got. And making some really hard decisions, obviously. Yeah, definitely. It was, it was really hard to... I think it took me probably three weeks to decide, um, let alone before that I was thinking for even longer whether or not I was going to stay working or if I could go part-time or yep. um, what I'd do. So it was a hard decision, but... I think it was one that needed to be made. <laughs> and the right one so far? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I've, I've noticed the big difference at the moment, so Great. it's good. What about you, Sarah? Yeah, I think a big one, especially for girls and young boys coming through school is probably the biggest one for me. I think um, particularly in those uh, later years towards the end of high school, I think I found I struggled a little bit to manage the load of um, schoolwork, your sport, obviously outside relationships and all those sort of things. So I think starting that at such a young age, we were doing sports six, seven days a week from when we were about 14, 15. And I think I was able to w weigh up what was most important. And to me, again, sport is one of the main things in my, in my life. And I was told by a few teachers and a few other people that you need to give some up and you need to stop. But I think eventually I was able to say you know what this is what I want to do and um, I managed to split my year 12 over two years in year 11 and 12 so I did about three VCE subjects in year 11 and I did four in year 12 so it made it a lot easier to manage but I think it was just making that decision that yep okay I gave up one or two sports and or a few days here or there and then um, still managed to study with my VCE and do exactly what I wanted to and make sure that it works. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, Sarah, <coughs> I'm going to go to you for a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. What's the message your coach, Damien Keeping, uh, sends about leadership to the group? I think it's, it's really important. He says to us that we need to make sure that we're a team, we're a unit, and we need them, and that comes across. I think all the girls obviously want to be in a leadership role and you want to be as a group and I think the the key message that has come across is that whatever we do that we're unified and I think that's that's one one of the main factors that we work on at training and um, in our sessions off off field is that we're unified wherever we go and whatever we do. So um, what have you learned about leadership since you've been in that professional environment at Carlton and who stands out to you as an effective leader at the club? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I think, I've, I think that, put you on the spot. yeah, no, it's good. Um, I think the, the thing that surprised me is how well everyone has reacted to everything. I think, like I said, we've We've all said that it's such a new environment, we're not sure what's going on, what's happening, and we're the ones that have to create that path. And I think everyone needs to take on that leadership role, and, I th and I'm really impressed with the way that everyone has done that. And I think everyone's taken on a role in the club, whether it's players, staff, you name it, everyone's stepped up, and it's, it's been a really, really good working environment and able to learn from that. So building that culture from the ground up, yeah, as you say, is, has been about yeah. everybody. Yeah, it's impeccable. I think that the culture has been where we started and that was, I think that's led the way and everyone's, we've got a base and we know where we're going and it's only up from here. Great, thank you. Um, Jess, over to you for a couple of questions. <laughs> Yours are going to be a little bit different because we've touched on the fact that you are entering into this environment recovering from an injury. So currently you're undergoing rehab for the ACL injury that you suffered last year. And we've touched on this a little bit, but how is resilience uh, playing a part in keeping you focused on, as your teammates prepare for their inaugural season? It's tough. 
er everything about it is, but um, I think in my head, I know that if I don't stay resilient and if I don't set myself those goals that I won't get there. And I know that if I just am airy fairy about my rehab and I'm, I don't care, then I'm not gonna get to where I wanna be. And that's gonna be playing with the girls next year. So, or in 2018. So I think the hardest thing for me at the moment is I see the girls doing drills together that I can't do. So I'll go off and I'll do another drill by myself to make sure that I'm still doing something while they're doing something. That leads beautifully into our next question <laughs> because we've spoken about the fact that the club as a whole, you know, everybody's really in a leadership position. Um, at the moment, you're recovering from injury. So how can you influence as a leader within the team when you are not part of the main training group? Um, there's things that I have set myself to do and one of those is to be able to pick people up when they're down and there's girls that are I, I see going into the physio because that's pretty much my home at the moment but I see them going in there they're they're a bit flat they're down they're telling the physio what's wrong with them and I know they've walked out of there and they're feeling like oh I might not be able to be ready for round one I'll go up and talk to them just make sure that their headspace is right and if it's not for the girls that are injured, I try and join in in drills with them. I'll, um, I'll, I try and push myself as much as I can so the girls can see that I'm setting a standard and I want them to know that that standard is high. So I'm hoping that that's what they're gonna go by as well. Do you feel like a bit of a, a mentor or even an off-field coach in the way that you're going about those things? Yeah, I, I do actually. There's times that um, some of the girls have come up and asked me some questions as well and um, I'm looking at a role or the coaches have brought me in to do a role um, while the girls will be playing I'll be doing other things so um, that's going to be some sort of leadership role to the girls and um, that's something I think I'll take on pretty well. Has that been something that the club's specifically identified for you I guess drafting you um, in this first season knowing that you wouldn't play has that been communicated to you that part of your role will be that mentor slash coach type player this year? Yeah, it, it has and they've got, um, I guess, each week or week in, week out, I'll be doing, I might be doing something for a couple of weeks with the girls or um, game day, I'll have a specific role that I'll have to do to help the girls um, as well. So there's a few different things and I don't know if I can reveal them or not, but um, just some are coaching roles, some I might be doing uh, water running just so I'm out there with them and I can send them messages and talk to them, help them get up as well. Yeah, well, let's not reveal any secrets just yet. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> haven't even played a game. So. <laughs> Couple of questions to finish off for both of you. Um, where do you see yourself in 10 years time? Sarah, I'll go with you first. Hopefully still playing. <laughs> I'd like to think I've got a big enough engine that eventually I'll um, yeah, be playing in 10 years. I think I'd like to keep in the, um, in the sporting industry and I'm studying as well next year. So I'll be going into a business degree at um, BU. Um, and then hopefully I'll, I'm looking at potentially starting my own business, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. And yeah, I think I'd, I, I want to stay, I'll hopefully coach coach at some stage and get into the um, youth girls as well and yep. yeah, help out where I can. What about you, Jess? Ten years I want to still be playing. Um, I want to make sure that I've got a leadership role. I think for me, um, I've always had that role through netball and through our other sports and everything, so I want to continue that with footy. Um, I also obviously would see myself doing some sort of work outside of sport but at the same time would hope that by then um, the women's footy has moved to full time as well um, but I'd look to be coaching um, all the younger kids and doing all the clinics and that sort of stuff as well. You've led us beautifully into the last question. <laughs> um, talk about crystal balling things but where does the AFL Women's League, what does it look like in 10 years time? Um, at the moment, so they're in there, obviously they're down the bottom to start with and everything's got to start somewhere. 
Um, I think it's in two years' time they'll review um, how the fixture's going and hopefully their idea is that the pathway for the youth girls at the moment, the talent will get bigger and bigger and hopefully in two years' time um, that's going to be big enough that they can progress to maybe two more teams, if not four more teams. Um, from there, they'll look to extend the season as well. So that'll eventually, in 10 years, looking to have maybe 10, 12 sides and be extended out to um, the full season as to what the males play as well. Yep. Anything to add, Sarah? Um, yeah, I think coming from um, netball, there's now an opportunity for girls and young girls playing other sports as well. Give it a shot. I think we... We were in the unknown and we, we said we'd go and test it out and look where we are now. I think it's it's been about seven, eight, nine months and now we're play, about to play in the first ever season of women's AFL. So I'd strongly suggest to anyone, come and try it out and that's the only way the growth numbers are going to expand. And look, 10 years time, like we said, hopefully it's going to be full time full time games for everyone and yeah. Great. Well, hopefully in 10 years' time, we've got some other fine athletes from the AFL Women's League like you ladies, um, and we're able to work with them as well. You've been an absolute delight to talk to today. Thank you so much for your time, and thanks for being on Leaders TV. We appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you.